Welcome to another episode of The Illustrious Gentleman, the place where comic book artists and top blokes Scott Godleski and Ryan Cody talk about life, work, comics and booze. Later. 140, 150 something episodes in. We finally got it. We finally got it. Here from Gangplank Chandler. Unfortunate name for a business. Sure. It's my second favorite gang related thing. Let's go to Gangplank. It sounds like it's just a bunch of weirdos planking. Oh, yeah. Like, on, yeah. 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 You walk in and there's just yeah, people they're... lying across yeah. chairs and shit. Yeah. Working their cores. Yeah. Planking. Right. Okay, so, uh, oh wait, I don't have my little notes. Uh oh. So, there's gonna be some the things we do for this show. We, we bought our beers an hour ago, so they're gonna be nice and warm. Um, I'm Ryan. I'm Scott. This is the illustrious gentleman. Let me pull up my little notes here. Um, hey, Scott, if people wanted to, uh, to follow us on social media, do you know what that address would be? Uh, they could go to tigshow.com. Well, that's a website, yeah. Yeah. But what, oh. what if they wanted to follow us on Instagram? Right, and... that wasn't the question. No. Uh, that's, um, what is it? T-I-G underscore show. That's right. Is everywhere? That's yeah. That's right. Oh, mine's right here. And where could they listen to all the past episodes if they were so inclined? You can do that at anchor.fm backslash tigshow. That's right. That's right, backslash Tig Show. And if you enjoy the show, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's already magic one minute in. Uh, you can support the show at patreon.com slash Tig Show um, for just a dollar a month. And uh, we got some great, um, got a couple of great questions by uh, by uh, by Mr. Burgers that we're actually not going to get to today because at the last minute, Scott came up with an idea. Uh, so, John, we'll get to those next week or, you know, soon. Um Nick, uh, Nick had a comment. Nick's worried about us. Patreon backer Nick is worried about our mental state. Don't be worried, Nick. This is our. Uh, what's the term? What are we trying to do here? Moving I'm up. just moving this out okay. of the way so I can. I'm just so scared of of changing any <laughs> right. any dynamic right I now. I don't know what this is on top of. Oh, is that the cord? Yeah. Oh, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. So yeah, it's Nick. Nick, we're fine. This is our normal. Um, I find it hard to believe that uh, we've been more down lately than we have in the previous 140 something episodes. Yeah, I don't believe it. But we're good. I'm good. We got some good beer. We actually uh, had to drive a long way to get this beer, but uh, thanks to the casual pint, Acatillo, I think is what it for was. For taking the show's money? Yes. For, yes. They didn't give us They didn't anything. give us any money, so I don't know why I'm giving them a shout out. Um, so I got this cool beer that I wanted to try. Because it's a collaboration between the Loft Cinema, which is in Tucson, and um, Tucson-based artist mm. Benjamin Moon, Moon, Mun, Moon, M U H N. I don't want to. Um, uh oh, Scott's fucking with things. Things are going to go bad. Um, no, so I don't. I don't want to. I don't. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing Ben's name, but it's uh, It's for the Joker movie. So the can art is uh, essentially like some pop art, comic book style art, uh, and the brewery Mason Ale Works, I believe, is in. Oh, this says San Diego. So it's a San Diego brewery uh, collaborating with the Loft Cinema in uh, Tucson for uh, Put on a Hoppy Face. (laughs) Get it? I I do get it. Put on a Hoppy Face. (laughs) It's a 6.7% IPA, obviously. Um, So a month ago or so when I said I was done with IPAs, I was lying to everybody. It's funny. So, yeah. Put on a hoppy face for Mason Ale Works. Uh, I, I mostly got it because uh, the artist that did the uh, can art, which I have I've never met in person. It's but, nice. I like it. Yeah. So there's probably no beer advocate review for this. Probably it not. just came out like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I, and I, I don't might really only see be anything. Yeah. Well. Mm. <sighs> Break apart. Mm, it's an IPA. That's for sure. Feels like it's got some apricot shit going on or something. There's really no, um, there's absolutely nothing on this can to, to say what it is really, other than what it is. I mean, there's no description. There's no like call to the Joker. There's no ode to Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I'm not gonna read anything. 
Okay. I just sort of Googled it, and it's got a word here that I don't know how to pronounce. It's an eponymous mm. confectionery treat. I spend enough time embarrassing myself on the internet. I'm not going to try to pronounce right. it. Right. All right, Scott. So what are you drinking, then? <clears throat> I grabbed myself the high water brewing break apart orange cream ale. Ale brewed with cocoa nib and orange peel. I really like. Did they spell cocoa like cream cocoa or cacao? Is it cacao? Cacao. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Cacao. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Hot cacao. Okay, so it's a orange some orange cream ale. Yes. Yeah, you're a big fan of that shit. Um, Especially if it's sun kissed orange peel. Oh. Yeah, it's got a little blurb on the back. Break apart orange cream ale is a delightful tribute. No, oh, fuck, it says it on the can. <laughs> to the autonomous confectionery treat. They just... Okay, we feature four varieties of sun-kissed orange peel, cocoa nibs from Ghana, and hints of vanilla, creating a flavor memory in your mouth. I want a flavor memory. Yeah, put that flavor memory in your mouth. Mm. I remember it. All right. And that's High Water Brewing from San uh, Jose. San Jose. Right. So if the if the mics are picking anything up, there's like a... What kind of music would you say is playing here? Like soft house music? Maybe. I don't know. Like non, non, non-offensive beat heavy yeah, music? Yeah, super uncool. I don't know. As soon as I walked in, I was regretful that I didn't remember my glow sticks. <laughs> right. And, and, to, and to, to paint a picture, we're in a tiny room. We're in a tiny room that has like these oh. chairs that are going to give us herpes. And trust me, it'll be the chairs that gives us herpes, not ourselves. Or the clap. And uh, <laughs> it's not really soundproof, so I don't know who can hear us on the other side. But, what do you mean it's not soundproof? Oh, I'm sorry. We have... <laughs> We have a dozen <laughs> like random foam squares, foam squares that are not mounted to anything. The yeah, they're just falling over on yeah. the laptops. Yeah, I'll have to take a picture. But it's it's it. I had grand plans for when I started coming down to Phoenix. Like we could record in person, like once a month, and we'll go to Gangplank and we'll get one of the conference rooms and whatever. And this is I, I think this, this is, is a bummer. This no, this is this is Tig level. You think so? Yeah. This is what they do, so because all the other rooms you have to be a gangplank member. So they probably do this so you feel so bad being in here that you, you get the membership, right? Right. Like I feel like I'm being molested. I gotta do this again. Yeah, as soon as I walked in here, I felt like I was being raped. Uh, this so, is the we deserve better room. Right. So yeah, we are in the gangplank HQ, Chandler, Arizona. Shout out to gangplank. Coming to you live, except we're Your not room live. Sucks. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe we'll pay. They do have a podcast room. Maybe I'll see how much memberships cost. We do have that fat $23 a month coming in from Patreon. Ching. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, these beers are Patreon beers. So thanks to all oh, our Patreons thanks, for buying us beer today. Let me ignore this phone call. <laughs> Don't know who that's from. Okay, so we're on top of shit. On top. So we do have a topic today, but before we get into that, do you have any TIG Talk stuff, Scott? Hmm. Anything you've been digging? Um... Technically, no, it's been not two really. weeks, really. I mean, we hunt, we saw each other last week, but we didn't record. Oh, so. yeah. yeah. No. No. Okay. No, everything's disappointing all the time. Yeah, I watched the second season of Jack Ryan. It was fine. It's weird. It was fine. It's still weird to see. Like, in the first season, you see, like, uh, uh, you see Jim from The Office, and he's, like, a reluctant dude. Like, he'll, he'll fuck somebody up if he has to, but he's, like, reluctant to do it. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, uh, like, early, like, young John McClain. He could do it, but he was, you know, he didn't want to do it. He didn't. No, and then the first Those are different uh, characters. I, I know, but they're both kind of like the ant, the reluctant, like they're not the gung ho macho. Let me, I, like, well, I want to. Do okay, this. so all I know of Jack Ryan is the Harrison Ford movies, right. where he's like office guy. Right. That's the whole thing. Is like he used to be in the military, but now he's office. He's like guy. a professor or something. Right. right. A professor of economics in this version of Jack Ryan. Oh. But. That he goes like spoiler alert. He goes like fucking full on like a team in this season, oh. which was seemed a little out of character. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. He's a little bigger too. Like I, I think maybe is he still have the same haircut? Same haircut, same yeah. beard. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I find him attractive. I I like watching him in these movies. Like I like the 13 Hours movie because he's kind of action. He, he in looks that. like a large teenager. Yeah, he looks like a 12 year old that just yeah. was, he looks like the tallest kid in middle school. 
Mm, yeah. Especially when he doesn't have the beard. Yes. Yeah, this season he has the beard all season long, so he looks... He actually looks like a grown-up in this season. Like, in the first season of Jack Ryan, when he doesn't have the beard at the beginning, mm. he does look like a giant. Like, he, yeah, he does look like, like the 14-year-old that can dunk. Yes. Right. The one white 14-year-old on the planet that could dunk. <laughs> he can touch the net. Yeah, it's Jim from The Office. So I watched that. Uh, I'm doing a rewatch of Chuck while I work. And I forgot how devastating, like, cripplingly attractive I find uh, Yvonne Strahovski. <laughs> Strahovski. Strahovsky. And it's this thing my brother-in-law told me once. It's it's the slight overbite in a woman. If her front teeth are not quite buck, but just slightly bigger. Like if she smiles and you can see just the two front teeth. Yeah. That's the key. And that's what this girl's got going on <laughs> all day. That's the key. So shout out. To, and Chuck has a great soundtrack. So shout out to Chuck. I'm glad I'm rewatching it. Um, my last note here is... Uh, Two articles came out yesterday. You're not on the internet much, so you probably didn't hear about any of this. But tell me about it. Both uh, Goran Parlov and John Paul Leon had serious health scares in the last year, and uh, they're like probably two of the best current guys working. Oh no, that's terrible. So it would be terrible. Like uh, I think uh, JPL has is like had like three bouts of cancer in the last like decade. Oh no. And uh, Goran Parlov had a stroke like a week ago. Huh. Um, he had the thumbs up in the picture he was yes. in the hospital bed good but i think maybe one side of his body still isn't working as good as it should so i don't that, that's how strokes work right it shuts down one half of your body like right down the yes. middle right so he's recovering and they're both fine i, I guess they're both recovering i would i don't know if we're fine but it just makes me think like we're getting to that age now like middle age where people our age are just slightly older than us are going to start getting sick and start dying and shit and it just i'll have somebody send prayers yes I'll send hopes. Someone else can send the prayers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but shout out to those guys. I, I, I would like to. They're the kind of guys like. Uh, I want to collect more, like art books and sort of artists. I want to follow when I have money to just throw at like runs of comics. Mm-hmm. And these are two guys that I, w- you know, I would definitely do that. So, uh, bummer. Yeah, but hopefully they stay healthy. All right, and then uh, just one other thing. Of note is uh, when this episode comes out, the family tree comes out. So turn this up, pause this <gasps> amazing episode, this upbeat, powerful, empowering <laughs> episode that we're doing right now. Pause it, hop in your Honda Civic, pull the choke out because I assume you have a Honda Civic from like the 70s. So you pull the choke all the way out, get it fired up, put put to your comic book shop, pick up family tree number one. Um, it is out today. I'm giddy. I'm actually, super excited. I actually, you know, I Googled it. I'm looking for reviews to see yeah. people say nice things about yeah. me. And uh, one, of, it wasn't a review, but one of the links that came up was the Image Comics website. So I clicked on the Image Comics website, and the cover to Family Tree is the main image on the... Fuck yeah. Yeah, so... Something I colored is on ImageComics.com's main website. Sweet. It's like a... I don't know if you felt the same way when Copperhead 1 came out, but I feel like... I'm, and all I, all I am is coloring it. I'm like the fourth guy on the totem pole here. But to have a book with the image eye on it is... That's badass. It's awesome. I'm excited about it. So it's a little warm in here. Um, so yeah, pick that up. Totes. Totes. I'm going to do it right now. Yeah. You have a... Through the miracle of uh, time travel, you have a copy. Um, okay. So I guess we'll just get into our topic because who knows how long this setup is going to continue to work. <laughs> shit, could go, yeah. shit could go south at any moment. This is true. Right. So, uh, also, when this episode drops, comes out, when you're listening to this, if you're listening to it the day it came out, then uh, Disney Plus launched yesterday. So, why Ma- is that noteworthy? Because The Mandalorian, you could have already seen The Mandalorian by the time you listened to me say the words Mandalorian. I had a whole joke in the car. It wasn't there. So, there was a movie called. Uh, Nick, Nicholas Cage was in a movie called like Captain Corel, man, Cap, man, Captain Something's Mandolin. Mandolin. So yeah, then I was, I was like just thinking, thinking I was thinking like uh, Captain Corellia's Mandalorian <laughs> or something like that, you know, like Planet Corellia's Mandalorian. At the end of the season, he'll take his helmet off and it's Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he'll pull out a mandolin, a Mandalorian <laughs> playing the mandolin, right, to a girl named Mandy. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so yeah, you wanted to talk about this, and you actually have notes. I have no notes other than, like every other Star Wars project, and All I'm right. not that big of a Star Wars geek. I kind of take things on face value. 
as as of everything, it looks great so far. Trailer okay. trailer wise, um, you want to pull up the trailer? No, I oh. hated the trailer. Well, there there's two trailers. Sure, but I thought it looks fine. Um, the, so I oh did. My God. Uh, our internet died. So I did. I did know. I do know that it's set um, five years after Return of the Jedi. <laughs> And twenty five years before Force Awakens. Okay, so which which is the it, I it, didn't realize there was a thirty year gap between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. I guess I didn't do that math ever. Yeah, I I wrote that down. So yeah, it takes place right after six, right? That's that's my understanding. Well, thirty years after six. No. Oh wait, wait. Like oh, immediately after five six. years. Five years after Return of the Jedi. Is it five? Yeah. I want it to be zero. No, it's five. Well, not anymore. So it's five years after the fall of the Empire. Five years after the Ewoks helped liberate... Five years after the Ewoks helped save the galaxy is when the Mandalorian happens. And I guess the premise is you got a rogue Mandalorian, which what a weird... They had, they could, if that's the best title, the best thing they could have came up with is Boba Fett's a Mandalorian or the clone... Whatever, man. I don't know. But it, yeah. It, yeah. So he's basically a bounty hunter on the edges of the galaxy, kind of in a the galaxy. The, the empire is done. The first order hasn't risen yet. So I I would assume it's a time of peace. So he's a bounty hunter in a time of peace. Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. And Gina Carano is in it with giant arms, and I'm in for that. I'm down for that fucking shit. Sign me up. Yeah. Hopefully she's just fucking bench pressing dudes left and right. Uh. For some reason, old ass uh, Lando Calrissian is in it as a new character. No, yeah, it's Carl Weathers. Right? Wasn't Carl Weathers Lando Calrissian? No. Billy D. Williams. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I'm the problem. <laughs> oh, so Apollo Creed is in it as these. Apollo Creed is in the Mandalorian, yes. right? Dylan, right? And then uh, the Sand Snake. No, the the, uh, the what? The guy who plays the Mandalorian was in Game of Thrones. He wasn't the Sand Snake. He was the. Uh, he got killed by the Mountain in Game of Thrones. Sure, forget his name. I, his his women were the Sand Snakes. I don't watch. Right, so his women were the Sand Snakes. He was something I'm not else. A fucking nerd. He fought the Mountain, and almost. He, there's a character called the Mountain. Oh. He fought the Mountain and almost won, and then he thought he killed him. Okay. The Mountain wasn't dead, and then the Mountain. Crushed his head. Oh, I do not. Oh care. shit! Spoiler alert for season. Spoiler alert for season two of Game of Thrones. Um, so that's Pedro Pascual is the Mandalorian. Okay. I'm just trying to go through the cast. Yeah, I don't, I don't know care. who else. I don't know who else. Okay. Doing. So my idea when just, I said I wanted just, to talk just, about this, squished his head like a fucking <laughs> fruit. Okay. <laughs> um, there's a, a podcast that I subscribe to called Story Break. Where there's three screenwriters and they take a concept yes. and they take like 90 minutes and they break the entire movie. They plot out the whole thing and all that stuff. But and it's I, not a real movie. No, it, it, the idea of the show is really fun. It's something I would like to do. Like one of my biggest like uh, dreams is to be like, is to sit in on... A writer's room of a show that I like. Uh huh. I think that would be super cool just to be there and sit around for like 10 hours while guys just spitball. Right. right. Like, like when I talk about like my bar fantasy is just a whiskey bar where I can go and sit down and listen to some dude just pounding out jazz on a piano and just sit there and just like just talk story ideas just for hours and hours and hours. But this the show is uh, the concept of the show is great, but they end up doing stuff like like toy lines and cereals and stuff. And so the idea of like breaking a Count Chocula movie is funny for the first couple of minutes, but when the right. podcast is seventy so, minutes long, right? It's probably just like us. We probably have about two minutes of gym in every right two hour. Podcast. We always go about sixty minutes too long, <laughs> right? Right. Um, but that that was sort of my deal. Like, um, you know, um, 
I was telling you one of the things I did the other week was just I was bored right. and lonely, okay. so I sat down and kind of just wrote out okay. ideas for the series. All right, so let's set. So the- I want us to break our own. Okay, so show. so let's set the table. So basically, just using the concept that we know exists. Yeah, yeah. I, I I wasn't sure how much to keep and how much to throw out. Well, all I know is I don't really all know, I know anything is it has about Apollo the show. Creed, Gina Carano, and right. I, I actually looked at the cast list, and they're only listed as in one episode each. So they're they're not like regular cast members. Oh, uh, that could be sort of some weird Disney shit. Are you sure you just For didn't look at the up. pilot? Top notch podcasting here. Uh, I get what you're saying though. Like, just take the ba- and this is I, I like that idea. Take the basic concept that's already there, and then what we would have done with it. Bill Burr's in one episode. Yeah, Werner Herzog. Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. Los Hermanos Pollos. Yeah, one episode. Look at this. Yeah. One episode, one episode. Right. Well, they probably haven't... Nick Nolte. Oh, yeah, he's one of the main cast members. See, now we're getting into the weeds here. I'm just Taika gonna... Watiti. He's a droid. <laughs> Paulo's name is Kreef. Judas Walco. Paulo Creed's name is Grief. Grief. <laughs> Sounds like Queef. Uh, so, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it's funny that you brought that up because I actually wrote that as a possible topic for today. So when you texted me very last minute about it, it fit. Um, sure. Okay. So I've said this a thousand times on every so many times. licensed thing. Um, I want it with the rules, the established rules of the franchise's universe, mm-hmm. but I don't want any ties. I want something new. So I hope that this is new. I don't want ties to. I don't want it filled with Easter eggs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's five years after. So there could be... I bet you there's a scene where there's some black market Millennium Falcon shit going on. Like, oh, yeah, we got this piece. Some dude Some dude wants it because he has to make the whatever run. And, oh, I don't know anything about him, but his partner's a Wookiee. Like, there's, there's got to be shit in there like that that might but be you don't fun. want that? It might be fun, but it could also be overused. Okay. What's the difference? Where are you going to draw the line? I don't mind, like, Maybe. Easter eggy sort of stuff, but you had, like... There was a scene in Rogue One where they're like, towards the end, they're leaving the base to go fly off and get the plans and sure. shit. Yep. And then they just have a shot of like R2-D2 and C-3PO there. And he says something like, oh. Yeah, that's I, too much. Here here we are. Yeah, that's too much. I'm, I'm, fi- I'm fine with the references. Okay. Like if there's a pilot, like if there's a pilot, like a kid or whatever, like say sure. there's a kid and he's playing with a toy and somebody asked him a question. He's like, well, my Uncle Wedge, you know, yeah. he was a great pilot. Yeah. You know, that is, that's fine as long as that doesn't become a storyline about Wedge and yeah. Tilly's nephew. But if we just see him, or if there's a poster on the back wall, like, remember Wedge or remember, you know, Red Five or whoever the fuck died. You mm-hmm. know, if, if you see that in the background, I'm fine with that. Okay. I just don't want... I think I don't want the whole. I don't thing. want the whole season to revolve around tying into one of the movies. Yes, I agree. That was the problem with okay. Rogue One. Yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. There we go. So there's a guideline. Yeah. That's. Yeah. yeah I don't want that. Yeah. Easter eggs are fine, but I. I want something new. I want something that stands on its own. So if, I, if someone had never, if it's possible to someone not to be into Star Wars right now and they watch this, I want them to like it because it's a sci-fi western, basically. Okay. What about places? What's your rule on places? I'm all for. Okay. I'm all for calling back to names and shit like or that. Or being there, like living like, there. No, like in the show. Yeah, like, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'd even be fine with like the bar. Okay, that's what I. Yeah. Sort of. Got I'd be that. fine with that. Okay. And I'd be fine with a mention of Jabba because oh, I guess he would be dead. Oh, true. Right. Um, so yeah, I would be fine with that. You could even have a funny scene where now that bar is like lawless because there's no you know there'd be a vacuum of crime lords or something i don't know mm. i guess what i'm saying is i don't want I, I wouldn't want someone to watch it and then have to think like oh am i missing something do i not get is there a reference there i'm not getting i don't want that like what am i not missing here i want the story to stand okay on its own. okay i want that so I, I would like the story to basically be remove every part of star wars and it's still a good sci-fi western okay sure you know i'm saying yeah the plot cannot be dependent on um, don't re- really right. really specific sort of right. Don't lean pieces. Don't lean on previous shit. Okay, because if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. 
Sorry. <laughs> I'm still sick. Um, <laughs> Pertinent. Okay, so what, what are your... You have a whole thing of notes. I'm kinda, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm just jazzing just here. Stuff. So what do you got? First of all, are you pumped about it? Because you did mention you're going to... I don't know if we were recording already, but you did mention you're probably going to get Disney+. Plus. Uh, yeah. How much is it? Seven bucks? See, my question is... Is it like CBS All Access where one episode a week is going to be released? I don't know. I don't I care. I feel like it is because care. your whole thing... Oh, that dude's two episodes. She's four yeah. episodes. Yeah. I mean, there's... Okay. Well, we're getting Things. we're getting in the weeds here, as Whatever. they say. Uh, I don't care. I might get, If it's seven bucks, I might get it. I mean, I paid seven bucks for a fucking beer the other night, and I was pissed, so I might as well jerk off to Gina Carano for seven bucks. <laughs> that's right. But only if she's, I mean, no, only if she's that's fully, terrible. Only if she's fully geared up, though. Like, I don't want her scantily clad. I want her in full body armor fucking people up with, like, a Gatling gun. And then I'll just pause it. <laughs> um, so, okay, so I, I guess by the time this drops, maybe we have next week's episode already done, because if we watch it, then we can talk about it. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, and people love our Star Wars content. Are you serious? I know. Or is that sarcasm? I think it's sarcasm. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Are you serious? Starcasm? <laughs> More like stargasm. Whoa! Uh, uh, okay, it's sorry. So I keep, inter- I keep interrupting you. Here. So when your first thoughts on it, are you pumped for it? What are you doing? I am consciously optimistic. The trailers didn't do anything for me. Um, but it's your wheelhouse. Sci-Fi Western is your wheelhouse. I mean, you did a comic think. Book. Right, if if you have a wheelhouse, I it's one of the spokes. I, I don't know. Everything's just so disappointing all the time now <laughs> that I don't. Yeah. I, I don't understand how anybody could go in to any sort of giant IP sort of event thing with right. any sort of optimism. Right. Well, no, I think optimism. There's definitely optimism. Um, it's just the... Uh, or excitement. I don't know how anyone can go into it and think that it's going to give them what they I'm want. I'm not going to pop popcorn and sit down and be like super happy when the credits come right. well, you, you Especially if you're in our business, you have to be well aware that it's whatever expectations you have, it's not going to live up to them. Now, you, yes. now it, might, it might go another way to where you're like, oh, I didn't expect that and that was pretty cool. But it's never going to, like, you're never going to finish the season, the eight episodes, and be like, man, that was exactly what I wanted. It hit every Right. Spot. You know, as much as I don't like The Last Jedi, I think I have to appreciate the approach. Because at least they tried to shake things well, up. Well, I, I think a lot of sort of these, the, like I said, the big IP sort of event things are built on um, moments. Wouldn't it be cool if this thing and this thing, let's do this and this and this. Right. And so they have the cool moments, but there's nothing, there's no interesting part where you say, oh, I want to see how this progresses, how this plays out. And I think that's one of the things I would want to do with this show. You know what? I I started um, Dark on Netflix, the my wife German show. My wife, my wife loves it. It's a time, time travel. travel. Yeah. It's, Spoiler alert. It's got a very heavy uh, lost vibe to it. Oh, so it's going to end terribly? Yeah. yeah. It's it's mystery porn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's like it's like yeah, it's like all those shows like Lost and Fringe It's like, "Ooh, another mystery, another mystery, yeah. another mystery." Oh, now that's canceled or yeah. it ends. Yeah. yeah. And I Obviously, that's it, really got no correlation to this. I thought I would just say that I don't really like dark. There's too much. There, <laughs> there, there's there's too wow. much. Oh, this is mysterious to be mysterious and child murder. There's right. too much of that for me to enjoy it. Right. If you're gonna have the child murder, you gotta have a scantily clad women at to least to balance it out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So you're saying you want more from the Mandalorian than just a fun action western? Yeah. Like, do you actually want a, like a deep story? I want something interesting. I, I want it to be more than just cool. I, I want it to right. be more than just a series of like posters. Right. Okay. Yeah. I can see when you, on your notes there. You have good handwriting, by the way. Um, I've worked on it a lot. I. How do you feel about the previous Mandal? Like I don't want. Okay. I don't want them brought into this at all. Well, there, the the thing is, I think one of the things that Disney did when they bought 
the property was throw out like all the extended universe shit. Yeah. So there were a bunch of books and all that garbage about what happens after six, and they're just like, "Fuck it, we're gonna do our own thing." So I'm gonna keep that here. So you can have a Mandalorian be whatever we want it to be. Right. So it doesn't even have to be like Boba Fett, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine the Mandalorians are just... A, there's a planet called Mandaloria. Sure. Some, somewhere, Mandalore. right? Mandalore. Or Mandalore. So, right. So, if you're a Mandalorian, you just come from a hard planet where everyone there is taught to use... Wet. They're just hard, like hard people. Well, okay. You don't have to go that far, even. I mean... I just wanted to say hard. Right. Every chance you got. That's right. I'm hard it, like that. I mean, there, there's no race of Jedis, right? Right, They're just particular okay, so, individuals. So maybe a Mandalorian's like a like a merc or something like that, like um, a, like muscle. Yeah, so that's something specific skill you can set. develop. Yeah, right. So you could have an alien be a Mandalorian. You could have sure. Yeah, yeah. Like so a un- under the helmet, it right. doesn't even have to be right a human. Yeah, yeah. It could be Which, like a girl with tentacles on her head. And if you set up that sort of aspect, um, then you sort of get the Spider Man premise. Where he's the everyman. It could be anybody under the Yeah, box. I kind of dig that. I kind of like that. This like It's just a group you join that trained you to be... It's like the it's like Infus Nest, which was the best part of the last Star Wars movie, or the best part of Solo. Oh, right. So it's like that. It's just like a group that trains you and you work for them, and it's like, right. you know... It's like Dog the Bounty Hunter. It's like they're, they're employees of Dog. Okay. The setting... Okay, where I want to start yeah, is r- like Save right after... Six end, so okay. right at the end of Return of the Jedi, with the medals, the, the, the second Death Star is gone, mm-hmm. Vader's gone, Ghosts. the Emperor's gone, and ghosts show up. Uh, that's where I would like to start. Mm-hmm. Um, so you would have all of these pieces of the Empire all over the galaxy that right. are suddenly just on their own. That's right. It's called a power vacuum. Right. So, right. so what are these pieces doing? So I imagine, like, there are, you know, the the uh, butt stuff, the officers, right? There's some probably really like hardcore ones that are going to keep going. Yeah, there's some splinter groups. There, there, there's stormtroopers yeah. are kind of just grunts, right? Yeah. So you just be like terrorist cells. Fuck, yeah. let's go do something else. Right, right. Yeah. So you could have you could set up all of these sort of disparate parts, sort of kind of doing their own thing or just walking away or whatever right like the high concept thing that I had for the Mandalorian would be so he would be sort of like a like a Jew Nazi hunter like at the end of World War 2 uh-huh. so this giant horrible evil regime has fallen so now it's time to yeah, it's like uh, they're not just going to walk away. These people aren't just going to go right. back to. It's like Eric Bana. The it's like Eric Bana in Munich, or yeah, uh, exactly the Bear Jew and right. That that's where I had written down. This is going to be the Space Bastards, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. now that's trademarked by somebody I know. Oh, it's yeah. yeah, oh, okay. a comic called Space Bastards. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. He doesn't listen to this podcast, but yeah, yeah. So that, that, that that would be that where would be I good. would start. Right. Yeah, like so and so. It's like after anything, like. You know, they, they, they collapse, but then you send out an order. Turn yourselves in, especially all these high-ranking generals or whatever. And the people who don't turn themselves in, you got to go hunt them down. Right. I mean, the Rebel Alliance is one, but they were severe underdogs, right? So there's this small... Yeah, they're still outnumbered. ...party, yeah. So it, it's going to take a long time to get out to these little the podunk planets and these far corners... Of the galaxy and shit, and I think there's an opportunity right. for a little bit of uh, send, revenge. Yeah, send in the black ops team to clean right. up. And yeah. my thought was also so order. I'm going to get super nerd. Order sixty six was the order that Palpatine issued. So all the stormtroopers turn on the Jedi, right, and kill everybody. And I think that might have been the same thing with like Mandalore or the Mandalorians. Right. There's this. I keep saying race, like this group of like 
super warriors? I I, think, I feel but, like that but, term is sort of stupid. But would they be would they be doing it because they think it's the right thing to do, or is the Rebel Alliance paying them? Well, I guess they wouldn't be the rebels anymore. But is the new government paying these people because they're good at their job to go do this? I think you can't be sending General Han around. No, they're a. This is a group of sort of loner like. Um, they're um, they're Ruby Ridge kind of. They're, Folks. they're Waco. Yeah, right. the, these are, you know, uh, sorry, these are the preppers. This is uh, right. Uh, these are they're using looking for an they, excuse. They get the Jedi treatment because they're dangerous, right? And they're looking for an excuse. They to, they don't put their noses in things because shit. they want to be left alone to do their own thing. But they're ready to fuck shit up if shit comes their way. Right. And they've been waiting to fuck shit up. Right. So they get taken out simultaneously when the Jedi get taken out, when all this stuff happens. Right. Oh. So he's a survivor. He's Maybe he was a kid at the time. And grandpa survivors, like, we're going to get these right. sons of bitches when the time comes. Right. So he's like the last... Um, right and now yeah that's so that so now the big the huge battle's over you know if we're looking at like a cloud the big battle's over so now these are some low hanging fruits we can go pick them off and get our revenge right because we couldn't get to the emperor we're not going to get revenge that way yeah but yeah maybe now now, now maybe we this, have our right, opportunity maybe this general and his group killed your father now right. now's our time because they don't have oh they could be like um it could be like an entire culture, like a small piece of the culture on this world. They could be like Vikings or something, just this, this sort of like warrior clan, yeah. sort of, yeah, something like that. Raised for revenge. Raised for one this purpose. This particular one is. Right, this Mandalorian. Right. He, the one who didn't get his head I, squished I, by I, the mountain. I would want him to be like Judge Dredd. Like, he doesn't take off the helmet. You don't see him. He's right. not a person. Right. He's uh, he's a force of nature. He's like right. vengeance personified. Doesn't even really talk. Like, he, you no. learn about his character from people around him. He. I, there's a term for this. Oh, the, shit. Uh, so, in, in good stories, right? You have characters with arcs, and these characters change over the course of the story. This is going to be one of those guys that doesn't. He's going to be the straight man. Right. The constant. So <clears throat> the supporting characters around him will be the ones that grow and change and do all the fuckity sap stuff. Yeah. that. Yeah. The easy way out is to make him likable and make him relatable. And I think the story-based decision would be what you're saying. It's just... No. He's, he, he has no allegiance. He, he, he will kill Han Solo as easily as he'll kill a formal, former it, it's empire. It's Star Wars and... He looks like Boba Fett, so he's got a built-in uh, sympathy. Is not the word, but people want this thing, right? Right. So I don't think you have to make him entirely sympathetic. I don't think you have to make him relatable. Um, he's just got to be cool. I don't think you have to give him a backstory like the right. Punisher. He doesn't need to be. Uh, yeah, nothing needs to be said about him other than he's feared. Um, he should have a yeah. reputation around him. Maybe. If he's going to be new, then he doesn't have that. Right? Right. Um, so, okay, let's fill out the cast. Please. What are we going to do? What? Who do you want to see? Well, you, you, you don't have to stick with no, 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 yeah. particular let's, people. Let's, uh, I guess... So if he's going to be the strong, silent type that doesn't take off his helmet and shit like that, he needs a sidekick that's... Okay. Sadly, I'm not in favor of it. Like the Rob Schneider character? In no, not, ne- not necessarily a comedic sidekick. He needs a partner, though. Like, Batman has Oracle. He needs... Yes. He needs a person that's, and first of all, that's going to doctor him up. I don't... Okay, I shit on the Rob Schneider thing, but... How dare you? You do need somebody that's personable right. and relatable and likable. You need an in. Right. Well, the, the problem is with current, especially Disney Star Wars, although the original Star Wars always had a comedic element, the problem is there is going to be... It's expected to have the comedic relief. It, okay. 
It's probably going to be a droid. And so it's going to be the droid in this in this version. It, it's going to be the it, droid. Everything needs it. I'm going to shit on that dark show again. That show was fucking oppressive. There are no jokes. So it needs nothing. Rob circumstantially or, or funny Spade. happens. <laughs> Nobody tells a joke. There's no. I've gone through <coughs> eight episodes. Jesus, there hasn't sorry. been a single laugh through eight episodes. Right. It is bleak as fuck. Oh, you're not laughing at the child murders. So okay, so. So what I would like to see is if I was creating – by the way, any show that I created based on any popular franchise would be a failure because obviously I'm not on in touch with what people want. Mm. I wouldn't have a straight-up comedic element. No. But I would have a likable partner who can be comedic if it's – like I want a joke that I chuckle at, not a joke that I laugh at. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want... Yes. I don't want to sure. go for big laughs. Sure. I want to go for, like, smart-ass yes. partner who... Yeah. I want, I want the partner who cracks on the Mandalorian. Thor and Endgame. Yeah, he, like, just makes jokes at his partner's expense. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, Mandalorian comes back it, with, like, a bullet yeah. bullet hole in his helmet, and his buddy's like, yeah, you should have should have went right, or something like that. Like... Sure. Stupid little inconsequential jokes. But also, you need that person to carry... That person's going to carry the story. Basically, because the other guy is just the hammer. You need someone to be the guide. You need someone to. The Mandalorian is the nail. You need the hammer. I don't know the, the metaphor I'm looking for. You need someone to guide the story and give it context because you don't want that to be the Mandalorian because you want the Mandalorian to just be a force of nature. Yeah, that's what I want. Right. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, almost. Even his partner is afraid of him. Like, don't unleash him. Don't like. Let's keep him reined in. Let's keep him on focus, because he is the kind of guy who will kill everyone in a room to kill one person. And we don't want to be that guy. Like, he could easily go off the rails. Yeah, maybe. What? That might be a little too know. dark. Yeah, it is, it I, is a I Disney, guess you it have, is a Disney Plus. You have show. to have the principles of some sort. If he if he's a guy seeking revenge. For um, an atrocity, he can't go and be the same kind of thing, right? Yeah, but wouldn't that turn you into the thing? Just like, uh, you know, bombing uh, villages in Kuwait creates terrorists. They become the same thing. Okay, maybe he he has a struggle. Yeah. Um, yeah, there should definitely be a scene... Keeping from turning into that thing. There should definitely be a scene somewhere where he's lighting up a bunch of bad guys and then turns and there's like a a kid or a waitress or something like that and he has to do the... He has to slow his rage because he's in the middle of a murder spree. Yeah. And that, that right there, that one scene will just show you like, oh, he's not a terrible guy. Sure. We could have a beer with that dude. Yeah. But even if he does, like in my version, if you're going to cast a noticeable actor, then you're... Gonna have to remove the helmet at some point, but yeah. even when you remove the helmet, I don't want him talking much. I don't. I don't want him to crack a joke. That's gonna be the downfall. If if the, if in this show, if he's a wise ass, if he's Mal from Firefly, when he doesn't have his helmet on, that's gonna be a disappointment. Yeah, you could have him be so so far out of touch with the yeah. human element. He's on the to where it's sort of. Comedic in parts, right? Like he doesn't know how to like make coffee, right? Right. Yeah, sort of the fish out of water, right? Not able to. He's scared of dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sort of thing, right? So yeah, my main. So my cast going back. Sorry, <clears throat> if I was making it, I would have a small cast. Yeah, and then a lot of like one hitter quitters. So you have the interesting characters who are just going to get lit up. But I would not have like a main cast of like eight people with eight different storylines. No. You know, you have every every cast member and every character and every role should support, either be directly supporting what the Mandalorian is doing or being opposed to that, yes. and that's the villain. I don't need that to know. That would be another thing. I don't need to know the co-pilot's backstory or, you know, like, I don't need to know the Mandalorian, if he has a mechanic on his ship, I don't need to know why the mechanic is working for the Mandalorian. Yeah. I don't give a shit. That's what I'm talking about. Like, not everyone needs their own storyline. Yeah, be, I agree. be in service to the goal of the show, and the goal of the show is the Mandalorian story of revenge or of yeah. I whatever. it sort of makes sense to me that maybe he could collect a cast along the way, mm-hmm. sort of uh, kill a warlord, and he has a slave like a slave Leia, yeah, there take you go. her on board, and she can just automatically like make the. I was going to make a joke about her cooking. No, she could be like the best mechanic. Were you going to say make a sandwich? <laughs> 
you know, but like you pick her up and then like you're just like you don't want to take her, but if you leave her there, she's gonna get murdered or raped. So you take her, you know, you plan to drop her off to the next planet, and then she ends up like fixing something on your ship that's been broken for like two years or you know something like that. Sure, you play against. Time. Makes herself valuable. Yeah. Although I think that's exactly what happened in Firefly. No, no, never mind. That female mechanic was just hired. I'm sorry, I digress. Yeah, you could collect your crew, and each of them provides a service. So you let them. Maybe they maybe they just buy into your mission. Like maybe this woman was a slave, and now she's like, if you're gonna go fuck up people who enslave other people, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in there. I'll go and I'll go with you. Yeah, right. And the funny part, you could have a comedic aspect with that, where like his whole crew can't fight or shoot or anything, so they're like a liability whenever they're on a mission. That would be funny without being overtly funny. Mm-hmm. Like they keep fucking things up, and he's got to keep going back and you know covering everybody's ass because that tells you a he's a good guy. For not just abandoning them, and then B, he's a he's a monster with a rifle. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess I'd have to re- reconsider what I want him to be. Okay, well, uh, while you do that, you mentioned know. you mentioned villain. So, do you think the series the series is going to have one major villain? Right, that's how TV works. That's how now. TV works. Right, <clears throat> you have to have the big bad. For so it could season. be could be eight episodes leading up to finding the one sure. guy he's looking sort of for. a Kill Bill kind of. Yeah. Set up. Right. Yeah. Get, get to the boss level. Fight all um, the mini bosses. Yeah. And then I guess you have to decide who it's going to be. My first thought would be, of course, it's some sort of imperial higher up right. that has gone into like a rogue general. hiding right. somewhere. Um, ugh, I don't know. It seems a little I mean, obvious it, and uninteresting. By the rules of the show, they've already claimed he's a bounty hunter. So that would imply that he's being hired to do something. I want to throw that out. I don't want okay. that at all. So you want him to have his own motive. You want him, you want him to be self motivated. Yes. See, I think what the show is going to do is it's going to. You think he's just doing this for money, and then towards the end you realize there's a personal connection. He's been after this guy all along. Um, you can have him looting things. <clears throat> like, yeah. Uh, does the Punisher do that? Does he? I think, Take I think the wallet. When he was first introduced, he used to steal shit. shit, and then I think I even read a comic. Maybe I'm wrong. I think at one point, like he would sell like drugs and shit to fund his <laughs> war on crime. I don't know. After they give him the money, he just right. shoots him in the head because right. they bought drugs. Maybe I'm wrong. Thinking of Omar well, from the, thinking of Omar from the Wire. Um, yeah, he could do. I don't know. I mean, that's how you make it seem like he's really not a good guy. Like at the end, maybe he does like take the jewels. After he kills the guy or something like that, but I mean, who wouldn't? They're just going to sit there and go to waste. Mm. The Tiber crystals that power your mm, the whatever lightsabers. they don't come cheap. That's right. Yeah, I don't know how far into the weeds you want to get with details, right? You're right. Yeah, I mean, if this show really is trying to be, if the show we're developing is really trying to be kind of a western, you don't want to bog it down with. That's what you definitely... Whatever you do, you do not want to bog it down with too much story. No. Yeah, I just... I want him to just, like, walk in to the right. the general store or whatever for ammunition. Just, like, throw a couple of credits on the counter. Yeah. And just point at something. Yeah. You know? And then they'll be like, oh, sir, uh, this is too much. And at that point, he's already walking out. Right. Because he doesn't have a concept of money. He's like Rain Man. Right. I don't give a fuck. How much does a new car cost? I don't know. A hundred dollars? Right. Yeah, Yeah, and that'd be the best part. Like, he walks back onto the ship with, like, all the... Somebody drops a box of matches and (laughs) counts them all right there. (laughs) All the new new armament he bought. And then they're like, hey, man, we need a new flux capacitor, dude. It's been out for, like, three years. And he just looks at him. It's like he only wants to spend his money on devices that can kill people. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, they're like doing duct tape on the fucking whatever. Hmm. Their laser motor thing. I don't know anything about Star Wars. Um, okay. Again, you have all these notes, and I keep talking, and we're 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 nah. We're, I, I we're keep rolling thinking on. of different scenes and shit. Oh, okay. One of the notes I had for cast was um, Cindy Crawford. Yes, as a. Um, disgraced former padawan so after like all the jedi get murdered but maybe on the day where he was sick he he was it was his first day of being the apprentice to some jedi 
and he freaks the fuck out like a coward and just can't do it like runs away so right. for you know what is it between it's like 20 years between the end of three and the end of six uh well luke is i'd say 25 luke's okay. in the 20s luke, luke and Leia are mid-20s, okay right and i don't know how old you have to be to do that like how what is the What's the time frame between being one of the little well, I, kids so, so and I, waving a lightsaber? So at I always equate, I always equated with being a Padawan full of midichlorians, which they tossed because that's stupid, uh, as like a Montessori school thing. Like you got to get in early, or they don't want you. Like you got to be okay. But when do you graduate to going out with your? Oh well, I mean, well, uh, master. And well, doing young stuff. Uh, young Obi Wan was like twenty when he okay. was still when he was still a Padawan. Okay, so about twenty. Uh, right. Plus the twenty-five years, so you got a forty-five year. Oh yeah, uh, perfect age, uh, man strength. But he would be like really, really pathetic, right? Because he only had one, like an hour of training, right? Right. So and he's just gone into hiding. Right. He's been undercover for so long. He right. hasn't done force stuff. Right. But maybe but, maybe he stole a lightsaber on his way out. Um, Does he have a saber? Does he not have a saber? Maybe. Right. Maybe that, that he hasn't used. Maybe it. that's the joke. Like every time he tries to turn it on, Forever. it like fritzes. Like, z- 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 or he can't. And he remember. shakes it. Yeah. Or he like shakes it. Like you like you'd kick a car or something. Like come on. Like come a on. shake weight. Right. <laughs> exactly like a shake weight. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Um. I don't. I like that idea though. Like he's got potential, but he never got trained. And it, so you have the fall of the empire, right? Mm-hmm. Darth Vader's dead. The Emperor's dead. There's this. The, you can feel it in the Force. The Force attuned people. So the the universe is suddenly a little lighter. Yeah, you wake up one morning. You're like, wow. There's no dark side pulling on. But them. maybe the Mandalorian comes through wherever he's living and fucks shit up. And he's like, yeah. I can do this too. Right. You know. He's, he's making. He's getting. Take his me room. with you. Right. What I. All my friends were murdered by a rogue Jedi right. when I was eight. And I haven't been able to get over that in the last 35 years. So please take me with you. Yeah. So I, 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 want, I want to learn to be like you. Yeah. I want to do the things you're doing, but I'm not capable of doing them myself. Right. Yeah. He wants to be a part of right. what's happening. And then he's like a rookie, so they make him carry like all the bags and shit. Right, yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah. got to pay for dinner. But he's 45. Right. Yeah. He's like, I'm That's too... humiliating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They all eat, and then like the Mandalorian and his hot co-pilot slash mechanic, they just walk away, and this guy's like, "Gotta dig the credits out." <laughs> Sees the bitch. <laughs> uh, you could have the Mandalorian recognize that he's force sensitive. Jedi. Yeah. Because I want that's what I want the Mandalorians to be. Are force sensitive. That what's that's what makes them. So like they're, they're not Jedi. Uber, super war. They're not Jedi, but they can pick no, it up. No, but they have. Specifically, the um, they can smell the, the premonition right. sort of aspect with the force, where they can see that's why like, they're so good. Two or three seconds ahead, so right. they can see all of their opponents' moves. And, right, that's why they're so yeah. good. Except for Boba Fett, who died. except for Boba Fett, and that might be something you could address too. Because that's I mean, the, that's a joke, right? Like, oh, I heard you guys were badasses, and then I saw some dude eat shit on a barge, <laughs> right. and then they're like, and then everyone's like, oh, he doesn't count. Yeah, did so he have a jetpack? Oh. Right. You can even have the joke, like, the Empire wouldn't have fallen if they would have made clones out of me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, that, that could be a thing, too. Um, Stormtroopers specifically are clones, right? Of, that's what we... Of Django. That's what we're supposed to believe. Okay. Right. And he could be, like, this race traitor who decided to right. work with the Empire. Oh, so maybe that's who the Mandalorian's going after the whole time. Django? Because he created well, the Stormtrooper. Well, he's dead. He got his fucking head cut off by Sam Jackson. Oh, and then Boba's dead too. And then Boba picked up the helmet. I was waiting for the head to fall out of the helmet, <laughs> just but like real slow, like a like when you open like a can of dog food or some refried beans, and it's like. It's <laughs> 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 kind of like the jelly. It's like. <laughs> 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 fucking hell! Um, yeah, I like that, and I would keep. This is another thing because, it, again, there's too many characters in most shows, too much cast. I would keep mine to three. Yes. And I like that. You have, you, have, you have the Mandalorian, you have the hot chick that can is also maybe the most capable of the group as far as like managing life skills and the ship. And then you have this new guy who just wants to be part of the killing. 
Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go past that. Of course, there's going to be a droid. I would not have a droid. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, there was a voice of a droid. Yeah, somewhere ta- in the Taiki cast. Right, and the other. So dude... you know he's going to be a, a funny droid, which is that seems to be the new trend also with Star Wars. Is let's make all the droids funny. The other guy's got the same amount of credits as a Jawa. Which I think is kind of interesting. That just means there's going to be a Jawa in every episode in the background somewhere. But what if he was... What if he was the like, partner? If he was like the, the weaponsmith yeah. or something. You get a little Jawa on the back of the ship. Yeah, just I mean, shit. kids like them. They're cute. They're funny. They, they have inherent humor just in the way they look and walk around. Because they're little people? Because they're little... No. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, What? <laughs> No, I, I think Jawas, I think they're full size. I just think the maximum height for a Jawa is like four foot. Right, that's what right. I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. He'd be like, yeah, he'd just like be in the back of the ship, just constantly making weapons. Yeah. 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 Even when, like, there could even be a scene like, look, man, we're good. Like, we already got like 15 plasma rifles and like a couple cannons, and that's all he does. Like, they just keep making shit. No. Yeah. Maybe um... the ship starts like being askew. Because the armory is so heavy, full of because he keeps making weapons. Yeah, maybe the girl is the pilot, and he could yeah. be he like could be the, the mechanic. Yeah. The, well, because because he's maximum Jawa height, he can get into tight spaces and he can make mm. all the fixes yeah. on the fly. Right. 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 Every ship needs a Jawa. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the episode. Every ship needs a Jawa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So okay. Well, then, then my brain, my OCD brain, and my uh, whatever, you can't have a crew of four. So maybe you have the Jawa, the girl, and the Mandalorian. Okay, I don't like. I, I don't, could. I don't I like could, uneven. I could dig that. I don't like. I don't like the idea that you can just partner up evenly. You need to have an uneven. You need to have an odd number of crew members. You got to go three or five. That's fine. Um, so maybe the fifth is the droid. No, I would stick with. Sorry, I would go with three, and then I would do a main supporting character for each sort of adventure. Mm-hmm. Every planet you land on, you have like your fixer or something on that planet right. who helps you yeah. get your vengeance. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's like, uh, maybe it's more like the A team where like he's getting contracted by like a farmer, like a water farmer who's like these, you know, these former stormtroopers have taken up camp half a mile away and they're taking my crops and I don't know what to do with it. Like when you need help, you call the Mandalorian. So then every episode you have like a, you know, that's your supporting staff. But then yeah. that makes him too good of a guy. Yeah, I feel like right. maybe it's more like the bride and he kind of just has a list that he's mm-hmm. working through. I like the idea of like the, yeah, the Nazi hunter vibe. The Yeah. They all deserve to pay for what they did. Right. And, and, and so then with each sort of target, you have a different sort of situation. Right. Um, you have somebody that's sort of left it and gone and... Sort of tried to blend back in, so he's living with his wife and kid. Right and then in, Ar- in Argentina, the quandary at the end, where right. you know, he he gets to him, but the choice is, I can murder him in front of his innocent family, right, or I could walk away. Yeah, wow, and, and maybe, maybe his family is like really ashamed. And he gives the gun to the kid at the end, and it walks out of the house. Yeah, because he does it like you come see me and tw- you track me down in twenty years, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Or, well, to kill the dad, it's like. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna fly, but I see what With you're with Disney, saying. right? Yeah. But yeah, like um, it is gonna be like the bride. He'll kill right. him, and then he'll yeah. be like, you know, give him like a tracking device. You can find me when you're ready, right, kid? Yeah, that's that's kind of cool, right? Yeah. He like flicks it to him. It's like a coin flipping in the air. Sure. He catches it. And he's like, "Come after me." Oh, when you're ready. okay. Ooh, the opening scene of episode one Scott's is animated. an attack on like so an imperial base because it's right at the end, right? So there's the, you get maybe some, they're getting reports right, or you get whatever an asshole on the phone. Like we're supposed over to the we're radio. supposed to give up. Like we're yeah, supposed the, to, or yeah the. Right. Uh, they're getting all these reports. The rebels have destroyed the the second Death Star. Right, we're under attack. Everything's happening right now. Right, but as the scene sort of goes along, it's not a rebel attack. It's just this one guy who's going into this fucking base, just fucking, fucking killing everybody, killing motherfuckers. 
I'm too short to take selfies. Yeah, it's it's OMAC, right? Yeah. 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 That's what I want. When the Mandalorian pulls his helmet off, I want a fucking giant <laughs> fro hawk. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Where his head only fills like one third the helmet and the rest is the mohawk. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I want him to like just unbuckle it and then it just rockets off of <laughs> his head. He just catches it. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh. <laughs> yeah, so you have a small cast, yeah. a defined mission. Not too in. Not this is. I, I. We've also talked about this before. There doesn't need to be more motivation than revenge. There doesn't have to be a secondary no. level of motivation. No. Um. So, just keep it simple. Keep his motivation simple. Keep him simple. And then you build up everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can have an episode where it's a race between him and the rebels to get to... Right. Because the rebels are just going to... This one guy, they're they're going to take him to jail. Right. Yeah. Some white collar prison where he can watch cable TV and get newspapers and shit. Three cots and a... Or three hots and a cot every day. Like, we don't... Fuck. He doesn't deserve that. That's right. That's right. He deserves a laser rifle to the temple. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of the the bride story. I kind of like that. So there's got to be somebody that he's working up to. Right. Huh. I don't know who that would be. You could make a character Hopefully, of hopefully it's cloth, somebody new. Because you know? it can't be one of the big, like... No, I, who would it be? It just has it's... to be like the leader of a platoon that killed his family or something like yes. that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I like the idea that, like you mentioned, the guy's in Argentina trying to blend in because they take in these Nazis and whatever, and he's got to track them down. And then he does have that dilemma. Like, he was doing what he was ordered to do. Does that make him a bad guy? Yeah. You know, has that ever been explored in the Star Wars universe that they're just doing what they're told? Like, they're just enlisting the military, and they're just doing what they're ordered to do. That used to be the whole thing about blowing up the Death Star. Like, they're, they're all just following orders, and you just killed all of them. Maybe the whole clone thing was a reaction to that sort of notion, right? So that we, they're not just they're not just people, right? They're, they're just they're not just nice people. They're just made in a factory. Somewhere. That's right. Right. They're programmed to be evil. Yeah, because nobody is just going to do that. Right by a New Zealander. Right. Right. Yes. It's an odd country to take your entire army from. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get this Kiwi and fucking make a million of them. Right. I was was trying to do a New New Zealand accent in my head and I couldn't get there. No. It's all just like mate, but that's not right. No, it's it's this... It's like a breathy, like... Yeah, there's a lot of, like... I, I don't know what it is. It's, yeah. it's drawing out. Like I can say the word work, like wick, wick, yeah. wick. We gotta go to wick. Yeah, yeah. That's the only <laughs> word I can say, though. Well, what other words rhyme? With, uh, let's see. I, I want this girl in my cook tack. <laughs> yeah. Thick. There you go. That's fucking wick. <laughs> Killing me. There you go. Yeah. Uh, man, it's hot in here. I'm sweating balls. Okay. Yeah, what I don't are, really what have anything else. What are you talking about? You got like four pages of immaculately it, written notes. You write in cursive too. I stopped writing in cursive when I was like in third grade. I don't have anything else that I really like anymore. That is actually shockingly good handwriting. It looks like a font. Can you write quickly or do you write slowly when you write like that? Like normal yeah. speed? Yeah, sure. That's actually... I'm fascinated by that. I've spent a, a couple of years working on my handwriting. Honing your handwriting? Consciously. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have all these, like, you're just throwing papers away and yelling at yourself for being stupid. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Yeah. That G doesn't match the other G. Yeah. Like, you have two Gs right there that match. Yeah. Perfectly. No. It's, um, it's Joaquin skill. Phoenix is going to play me in the movie about working on my handwriting no one wants to fuck me my handwriting yeah. sucks so just me... in a blue tinted room just right. sitting in front of a single light <laughs> like naked sitting in the chair writing and writing it. okay so do you have any more notes yeah. do you have any more thoughts uh no I have a note here like if there are different like Mandalorian clans like Scottish Highlanders and stuff well because they... he, well he doesn't have this, his suit's not the same color as Boba's yeah and Boba like you see the tattoo all over the place it's like this 
like a like a sheep skull sort of thing. Yeah, that maybe maybe there's different crests for different families. Yeah, clans. Points. I like that. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny how Boba Fett became. What was it about that character? He that... just looked cool. He doesn't That's really a... look that cool. He's got a bucket helmet. What's well, cool looking? I like yeah, it. I guess. I mean, the guy had like five minutes of screen time and became like one of the most popular. He had a jetpack, oh. and he shot the thing from his wrist. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He had a cool voice. I don't know. Did he? I don't well, he know. Wasn't, he sounded like bad guy. He wasn't a New Zealander no. then. He sounded. No, he just sounded like bad guy. They replaced his voice when they redid the, him. Yeah, really. In the Blu-ray edition Did or they? something. Yeah, they keep fucking around with yeah. shit. But yeah. Like in the in the version where they replaced Anakin's head with yeah the ghost's fucking face yeah what yeah um what's his name David Prowse yeah they... oh uh, Anderson not Hans Christian Anderson <laughs> right uh, Christian uh... yes Bale they put Christian Bale's head on. Luke... Darth, Darth Vader's old, old body. Darth Vader yes. dying Darth Vader they got rid of David Prowse's face and, it's and Christian put... Bale now. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you learn something new every day. Um, as we wrap this up, um, just a giant sigh of relief for all of our listeners. How disappointed, on a scale of 1 to 10, mm-hmm. how disappointed do you think you're going to be in it? Because it really... Out of... That, what did you say? 1 to 10. 1 to 10. But it, but it goes based off of what your expectations going in are. Oh, everything is everybody right but like sure. I, I can't so like the, the, that's why it's safe to never have expectations so like Rogue One and Force Awakens didn't hit my personal expectations right so sure. you would think going into Rise of Skywalker terrible fucking name or I'm sorry Rise of Skywalker is fine The Rise of Skywalker is a terrible name <laughs> it's unnecessary the the anyways um I, I'm still excited about I'm pumped about it. I bought tickets for it like a month ago. Oh. I'm super excited about it, and I know it's not going to... I'm going to leave why? thinking like... Oh, okay, why are you excited about it? Because I want it to be good. Oh, okay. I, it deser- I, I, Your excitement it, comes out of hope. <clears throat> yes, it, it's one of these properties that I think deserves to be something special and not just like Lethal Weapon 5. Like it deserves a... Every Star Wars movie deserves to be better than just a regular sequel. Yes. And they're slowly becoming just regular sequels. So I... I am excited. For The Mandalorian. No. Oh. For Rise of Skywalker. Really? The Rise of The Skywalker. Add thes wherever you can in there. Ugh. Only it, because it's of... The I'm fucking... excited because of The Last Jedi. Because The Last Jedi was... So different? Such... A goddamn train wreck, and undid everything that Force Awakens. You did. want to see them redo I, everything? I'm I'm super excited for. I, I'm really into how the sausage is made, sort of stuff. Yeah, you are. So, just uh, yeah, how they salvage anything and the choices they make. That's what I'm excited to see. Okay, I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. Did you get your tickets yet? No. I'll wait. You Ugh. can't. Well, I guess you're not on social media, so you actually could wait till it hits like Blu-ray. Till oh it yeah, hits like Redbox. Nothing's gonna be ruined gonna... for me. No, I'll spoil it for you though. But I'll tell you like all. Oh, the that's lies. fine. That'll be a fun episode. Oh. I'll see it and you won't, and I'll tell you. I'll talk about the movie, but okay. it's not the movie yep. at all. That's a, that's a good idea right. actually. Yeah. Halfway through, it turns into like softcore porn. You're like really? Yeah, oh. totally. I don't know what else they could do. <laughs> Okay, so Mandalorian, how disappointed do you expect to be after the eight episodes? Based on what I've seen out of the trailers. Eight? Wow. Eight. But you're still you're still gonna buy that shit and watch it on Tuesday. Um Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why mm-hmm. I'm gonna watch it, but I'm gonna watch it. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want it to be justified in space. That's right. all I want. Well, if we both like if we both find time to watch it between Tuesday night and like Mandalorian Jabba Doug Cole together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. You're all about the lawman in space. Yeah. 
If they uh, were you, uh, you you're, you're too young. But did you uh, did you ever watch the Brave Star cartoon? I know what Brave Star is. Okay. No, I did not. Okay. Well, that's Lawman Man in Space. Yeah, the cool yeah. like chrome cowboy hat. Yeah, it's badass. Jesus, there's no airflow in this office. I'm starting to actually visibly sweat. Okay, uh, so you think you're going to be eight disappointed? I think I'm going to be probably the same because I actually like the trailers. So that's actually going to disappoint me if it. Well, I I don't want the bounty hunting aspect. Right, I already know that. That's well, they, they have said that he's kind of like the man with no name, Clint Eastwood. Like he's just kind of that dude. So if they stick to that, if that's true, and he's just the dude who shows up and fucks you up. I'm visually, there's a bit of the trailer I like, and it's the only part of any of it that I have been. Is it Gina Carano holding a giant gun? No, oh. he. There's a bit. There's a quick. Flash where he draws his pistol and shoots. And that's it. Uh, he does this cool sort of motion where he kind of leans back to the side, draws it, and he does that sort of thing. He looks like, uh, you know, Raylan. Like, um, I don't know, he looks like 50 like movies, Western yeah. guy. Yeah. All right. No, he can't. Uh, yeah. I, I was talking to somebody this weekend about the show, and I said, you know, I, that's all I want. Like, if he takes off his helmet and it's Tim Oliphant, I'd stand up in my living room and clap. Oh, Jesus. You'll fucking jizz your pants. Okay. <coughs> fucking hell. I apologize. I haven't been able to shake this cough. Um, you make me pull and put you down. That's right. All right, dude. How was your... Uh, you put it all the way in the corner. You put it as far away from you as the room would allow. That, that wasn't... Don't read anything. Okay. Under. I I was just I was keeping the wall up. Oh, I, was oh okay. I see what you're saying. Yes, you're keeping our. It was a load bearing beer. Yeah, that's right. Because the soundproof situation. Um, so what do you think about that bad boy? Your orange drink. Um, my what is, what is five orange? four break apart orange cream, cream ale. ale. I like this. It's cream disappointing. Ales. I is would it? Say. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Wow. Um. We we're on such a high too. I was hoping it was going to be like a four and a half. There's just maybe a touch of orange in there. I don't get any of the. Do you need chocolate? Do you I don't get any chocolate. You you probably get something like that. It'd be more pronounced anyway. I have a port or a porter or a stout. Or right. Um. Yeah, it, it's disappointing. Yeah, whatever. It's a. Uh, Two and a half. I go two and a half. All right. Yeah, my uh, put on a hoppy face, which is actually kind of a funny name. The more I look at it, the more I like it. I hated it at first, and now I think it's kind of funny. Uh, my put on a hoppy face, it was just a, just another IPA. Nothing special. I don't know what I expect it these days. Like, it's like a... I was gonna. Say, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say, but it's like a, if you eat if you eat pizza 400 times a year. You gotta have a really special piece of pizza right. to stand out, and I drink hundreds of IPAs a year, so it just didn't stand out. Uh, I'm gonna give it a three. Although if I was basing it off of um, good job hiring local artists, I hope uh, Ben got paid for this. I hope it was a sweet gig for him. Um, so uh, I'm gonna give it a three, though it was nothing special. And then uh, just secondarily, secondarily, secondary, secondary. Uh, I drink a coffee stout uh, from uh, Parish Brewing from Bruce, Broussard, Louisiana. Uh, product of Acadiana, the Acadia area, Acadia, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was fine this day. It's just exactly like coffee. It's what I want a coffee stout to be. Um, but I'm going to give my put on a hoppy face a three. Uh, anything else? No, I don't think so. All right. Tell well, us how you liked the show. Were you disappointed? If you were on a scale of 1 to 10, what was your disappointment level? Yeah. Um, okay, because my disappointment level on this room at Gangplank is... Is it 11? Yeah, let's turn it all the way up to 11. I'm sweating again. Spinal tap joke. Oh. Yeah, this is a weird spot. I I wasn't sure what to expect. It's This wasn't it, though. The door is on the very end of the room. It's right in the corner, uh-huh. and you walk in, and I thought that was it. Like that was it right there. Uh, so it was, it was better. Three than foot you by six foot space. I thought maybe we'd have to sit on the floor. Oh. No, instead of three foot by six foot, it's four foot by six foot. 
Oh, uh, it's probably it's probably six by eight. No, five <laughs> five by eight maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's up to code. It someone, sucks. So, someone just walled this it off. It sucks. It sucks, but we'll probably be back here. Yeah, sure. That's how we roll. Next time, I'll bring one of those little personal fans. Just hold a little spray bottle yeah. on it. <laughs> All right, Scott. You know what to do. Uh, yeah. Um, this is where I say goodbye. I think. That's right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tickshow.com Oh my god.